Hey guys, it's Amy here, and today I bring you my August wrap up. So August was a bit of a strange month for me, I had a lot of family things going on and I went away and so I didn't really feel like I was reading a lot but I've come to do this video and I've actually got nine books to talk to you about. All of those books, apart from one though, are under 200 pages so I'm actually looking forward to sharing some shorter books with you because I don't really feel like I talk about books under 200 pages a lot so let's do that. Starting with my lowest star rating and that is two stars and that goes to The Alchemist by Paolo Calho. I'm not really sure on that name. This one I wanted to enjoy, I just found it very preachy. It basically follows the story of a young boy, he's a shepherd and he is going on a quest to find a treasure and on that quest he meets various people who teach him lots of lessons about life and he discovers lots of things about himself and he grows up and all these things and it was very preachy, that's all I can kind of describe it as. It just reminded me of those stories that I read when I was younger where the moral of the story was so blatant and so in your face that it just seemed pointless it being in a story, like it's just like why don't you just tell me what you're trying to tell me rather than just really badly hiding it in this story. It reminded me somewhat of Sophie's World by Justine Garder but in a much lesser form and I think if you want to read a book that kind of explores who you are as a person and philosophy and those kind of things then go for that one rather than this one unless you're a young person. I think this book would be really good if you are like, I don't know, aged 9 to 15 or something maybe? Like I think for an adult this one just seems a bit juvenile so there we go I gave this one two stars. Um, moving on to my three star reads and firstly we have The Paris Architect by Charles Belfort. This is the only book this month that was over 200 pages. It follows the story of a French man, he's an architect and it's during World War II when France is being occupied by Germany and all the Jewish people are essentially being exterminated and chased out of the gutters and trying to be found and killed by the German people. At the beginning of the novel our protagonist is approached by a very wealthy man and he is asked to construct a place that Jewish people can hide in within his home. It goes on from there, he then starts constructing these hiding places and he is really enjoying outwitting the Germans and saving people's lives basically. What I really love about this one is at the beginning the protagonist is really kind of against the Jewish people and he doesn't really like what the only reason he's doing it is because he's been paid a lot of money and slowly you can see his views change towards these people and he starts seeing that they are real people and it's just really well done in that respect. I liked the way he grew throughout the novel even though come the end I still didn't even like him as a person like I didn't find him a enjoyable character I just thought his growth throughout was really good. One thing that really resonated with me and as you know if you've been here for a little while I've been reading a lot of World War II books this year but one thing with this book was the absolute terror and the fear like I've I don't know how to explain it because I've the, the books that I've been reading so far on World War II have kind of been in the action or at the concentration camp or just people involved in it that whereas this one was like much more concentrated on the people running and hiding and the fear and that fear was so palpable in this book and when they were hiding like you were with them hiding and it was just terrifying and it really really like shook me up a bit like I just couldn't even imagine ever being like running for your life like I can't imagine how terrifying that is knowing that someone could just walk straight in and shoot through the floorboards and you'd be dead like that to me is terrifying and I think it's important to read about these things in books and remember like what can happen if these kind of governments and things get out of control and, and world wars begin, it's just bad stuff so yes I really enjoyed that one, three stars. Next for my three star reads we have The Castle of Inside Out by David Henry Wilson, this is illustrated by Chris Riddell. I enjoyed this one, it was very Alice in Wonderland s. It follows a girl named Lorena as she goes to this castle and she is trying to help the people who live outside the castle who are in poverty and don't have enough food and things and she's going into the castle to discover why these people don't have enough food and who the people are inside the castle who are taking all their food and not giving them enough money and things. As the book goes on Lorena is kind of buffeted between various kind of nasty characters inside the castle who are all kind of spewing these riddles and trying to confuse her and stop her from the mission that she she's trying to complete and I just thought it was a really fun novel. I think it would definitely be good if you are interested in reading Alice in Wonderland but maybe you're a bit too young to kind of 
fully get it. Like, Alice in Wonderland, I think, is a hard book for really young people to read, but if you're like, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, ten, that around, around that age, then I think you would enjoy this one. But another three star read is The Wave by Morton Rue. This one is like a novelization of a true event that happened in a Californian school. So basically, a teacher wanted to illustrate to his students how terrifying and how kind of brainwashed you could become during World War II as a Nazi under Hitler's control. So basically in this book you see how a school is brought from being like a regular school where the children aren't really behaving themselves and just kind of doing their general thing to children chanting and saluting and walking around the corridors and being part of this thing known as the wave. And if students aren't wanting to cooperate and aren't wanting to be part of the wave then bad things start happening, people start getting beaten up and then slowly these students start to realise like what have we got into, what have we started and um, that's the whole kind of lesson of the story. The reason I gave this one three stars instead of more than that is because I feel like yes it was a very good story and the kind of fictional aspect of it kind of woven through was very good but ultimately this had already happened like Morton Rue didn't come up with the idea of this story like it was very clever but it happened in real life so this is just like documentation of something that had happened with kind of fictional elements added in so that's the reason I gave it three stars I don't think I could give it any more than that. My final three star read for the month was Belle and Sebastian the Child of the Mountains by Cecil Albury this is illustrated by Helen Stevens this is a French children's literature translated over into English. Again, I thought this was an enjoyable read. I think I would have enjoyed it more if I was a younger person. I just find that sometimes children's books really have to have something special about them to engage adults as well as children. It basically follows the story of a young boy named Sebastian who is an orphan and he's found on the mountains and taken in by a village and a dog named Belle who comes in later in the story who he convinces to come off the mountains and befriend him and it's just a sweet little story. I mean, it didn't blow me away, but I definitely think I would give it to a younger person because I think that's who would enjoy it a little bit more than me. Moving swiftly on to my four star books for the month, and firstly we have Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. This one follows the story of a man named Billy Pilgrim during World War II. He is taken as an American prisoner of war in Dresden. Him and his fellow prisoners are kept in a slaughterhouse known as Slaughterhouse Five, and whilst they are there, the bombing of Dresden happens. They all managed to survive and this is the story and kind of the aftermath of this but also it kind of I don't know how to explain this one because he bops through time like he is there and that's the main kind of part of the story but then also you go into his past and you go into the future and there are aliens in this novel I don't yeah I know I don't know how to explain it it's a weird book and it takes a little while to get used to especially as I've been reading lots of other books that are World War II related and quite serious in nature this one has a very kind of sarcastic and almost like dark humour look at fighting and war and things like that. So I would recommend this one if you enjoy kind of books that are slightly on the darker side and just a bit weird. It was a bit weird. So there we go. Four stars for that one. Final four star book for the month was Beast by Paul Kingsnorth. This one was sent to me by Faber and I really enjoyed this one. I don't know if I even fully understood it but I loved it nonetheless like I have been thinking about it since I finished it and I just thought it was really really well done. Not much happens to be honest it basically follows a man who takes himself off away from his family to live on the moors and you don't really know what's happened with his family and even come the end you don't really know what has happened in his life for him to end up on this moor and it's basically his kind of musings and him kind of discovering things about himself and his past and his life and you don't even really know like all the way through like what is his memories and what is past and present and it's all beautifully written though that that's the only reason I really really love this was because it kind of felt poetic like I like you were reading a song it was just really really well spun like you were kind of caught up in it the whole time that this man is on the moor he believes that this beast is following him hence the name of the book he can see this thing in his peripheral and he is determined to try and find it and discover what it is and what it wants from him basically it's a really odd novel and I don't know if I even fully understood it myself but I really enjoyed it so I would recommend this one if you want something like slightly experimental and a little bit odd give it a go. So finally we move on to my five star books for the month and I have two this month which is very exciting because I don't usually have that many five star reads. So firstly we have Night by Ellie Wiesel. I think that's possibly how you say his name. This one like 
my goodness, like, uh, I had the same experience with this one as I did with All Quiet on the Western Front by Eric Maria Remark. If you watched that video where I spoke about that one and how much it affected me, I basically had the same thing happen this, with this one. And this one, maybe even more so because this is a true story. It's Ellie Wiesel's account of being taken to Auschwitz and being kind of tortured and tormented there for three years and surviving it. I mean, you can see that this book isn't very long, it didn't take me very long to read, but the contents, like... I... no other books have ever made me feel so, like, uh, ashamed of humanity, basically. It just, like, I don't know how to explain it, but it just makes you think, like, how on earth can people treat other humans in the way that people have been treated through history in wars and things like that. It, it terrifies me. Uh, yet this book was just eye-opening and wonderful and I think everyone should go and read this. Like, undoubtedly, it, at some point in your life you should definitely read this book. Yeah, I don't even know if anything more needs to be said. Like, I don't need to describe to you what happens in this book for you to imagine the horrors that this man and his father had to endure. Like, it just... It, ugh. Ah, ah. <laughs> like there we go five out of five stars like really go and read it if you get the chance like just go go and read it final five star read for the month was madonna in a fur coat by Serbahattin ali this is a turkish classic i believe and it's been translated over into english so i have been able to read it this one follows the story of a man who moves from turkey to berlin in the 1920s and it's basically him trying to discover himself trying to work out who he's meant to be but he also meets this woman and this woman becomes like everything to him and he's completely obsessed by her by everything she kind of represents and and she he wants everything with her to be perfect but it's not and and she doesn't want what he wants and it's it's ah oh, it just it was such a raw depiction of what relationships and love is like like it's not perfect and it's not always going to work out how you want it to be like this was such a tragic story it was so sad in parts and it just like it's real because like it doesn't all happen like it does in the disney films you know like this book was really beautifully written like i found like passages where i was just like whoa like this is so clever, like, this is so well done. I really, really enjoyed it. I did not expect to like this book as much as I did. Like, even, like, 50 pages in, I was thinking, like, uh, you know, not really sure if I'm enjoying this one. But come the end, I was like, whoa, like, <laughs> that is one I'm going to be thinking about it for quite a while. And I know I'll probably be reading it again in the future sometime. So there we are. Those are all the books that I read in August. I would love to hear your opinions. If you've read any of these, do let me know what you thought of them down below. What have you been reading in August? Is there anything that you've really, really loved? Please tell me in the comments. As always, I will leave links to Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, everything I've mentioned today down below. I hope you're all having a fantastic day and I will see you soon. Bye! As I haven't been around for a little while, I thought I'd kick off with a book haul and a currently reading video, so that is what we're going to do now. Let's begin.